All right, I suppose it's that time. I think we should get started. Time to rock and roll with some fun and interaction. Yeah. <laughs> so we're running late this week, and we have a special guest. We do. It's really cool. We've been talking about having this guy on for a long time. Why don't you introduce yourself, man? Hi, guys. Dragon Timer Blade. Um, mostly on YouTube, occasionally on Twitch. Very bad at keeping my schedule, though. I'm a bad, bad person. You know, so, I, we, we met the other weekend, and, and I, I believe you. I think you are a bad person. <laughs> I did actually lead in instantly with insulting my girlfriend's ability to play card games. So That's that was true. a hell of a first impression. That's true. Your girlfriend seems real nice, so she's real pretty. Congratulations. Way out of my league. I've, I'm right there with you, brother. <laughs> so you'll have to excuse me for a minute. This is kind of funny. So we do have a special guest, and we were running a hair late, and I, I did I did the technology <laughs> oh God, check. Oh, off the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I did the technology check, and I was like, all right, I can see everybody, but places are in the wrong spot. So for the people watching this live, <laughs> you're about to see some uh, chicanery as I swap things around. Do not look at the man behind the curtain. Justin used doppelganger on me. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my god, what is happening? To this? <laughs> DTB is now fun and interactive, you see that? That's that's what's up, dude. I love it. I've always loved the name of our podcast. <laughs> I think it might be the best thing about it. I mean, it's certainly <laughs> not the actual content. No, it's there's no way it's that. <laughs> We have a lot to talk about this week, man. Like, first of all, I just celebrated my four-month anniversary remembering to use the Twitch Prime sub on your channel, everyone. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. Yay! I did see yeah. that. And uh, Kazoo Croc as well. So notifications awesome. are off for the podcast, and uh, but we do see them, and I do appreciate it. Yeah. Um, okay. I want to call attention to a couple of things. First, yeah. Justin sounds amazing and looks oh, even you. better. <clears throat> You can see my eye eyelashes. It's so clear, actually. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who don't know, Justin got a new microphone and webcam, and yeah, he has more than eight pixels. You can see him in <laughs> HD now. Yeah, my old webcam cost uh, less than twenty dollars. The one that I used on the channel for a year and a half, and my old headset was about nineteen, and it was broken. So now I'm just using that as a a thing, and I have a blue snowball ice. The, the Yeti Snowball? That's the one you went with? I have this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sorry. It's the, you, you were correct, it's blue. I have the blue Yeti, and I always think that it's a Yeti Snowball, so I always confuse them. <laughs> so we're very, very similar in our microphone tastes. But you look amazing. Uh, DTB you. also always looks amazing, but for those of you who don't know, uh, we did meet him in person last weekend. This is our first show, uh, yes. Back to the Semi-Normal schedule we were at pax mm -hmm. live with uh, yes. bethesda on their stage it was a very surreal experience but we also got to meet dragon tamer blade there it was it was a lot of fun um if you missed it you can catch that on the bethesda channel it's also on my youtube as well and through the normal audio channels if you follow us that way so uh it's a little bit of a different format because we were live at pax but uh, yeah, it's there now. So if you missed it, you can you can see us. Funny story uh, about the other places you can find the podcast. Um, CVH and Sandra and I were at the airport at like seven o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning last weekend, and we were just chatting. And he was like talking about how he knows somebody who works for Stitcher or whatever. And I was like, "What the fuck is Stitcher?" <laughs> And he's like, it's this podcast place. I was like, oh, we should get our show on there. He's like, your show is on there. And I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. It's one of the one of the only things I'm good for. Justin brings all of the quality content, and I do all the behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> yeah. So at some point, I'll, I'll check that website out because uh, here's another full disclosure thing. I've never listened to any podcast before. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Not even our own. I mean, I mean honestly, I've never re-listened to it. No. <laughs> <laughs> it shows in the quality of our casts. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I could learn from my mistakes, but like then we just have a totally different show. So, so we have a lot to talk about with the expansion, but since this is our like only 
show really that we, that we can like recap from packs. I want to start by saying, uh, Dragon, DTB, what was surprising to you about packs? And th this can be about like the event itself. Um, like overall, it could be about Bethesda and their setup. It could be about like creators you met. Like, I want to know, like, how was your experience? What did you take away from going to PAX? Uh, well, first of all, not to be a shill. Um, the most surprising thing, to be honest, was how much more I enjoyed the Bethesda event more than PAX itself. Like, I bought my PAX tickets, went there first before the Bethesda event started. Uh, we kind of did a loop or two. And it was crazy long lines. You couldn't see any of the content for the most part besides walking by. Then I went to the Bethesda event, and my girlfriend feels the same way. She was like, next year, why don't we just get a hotel room for this and just skip PAX? Um, so very impressed by both how well the Bethesda event was put together. And it was packed, which is good. But at the same time, like when I wanted to get in and play Legends, it was basically almost no wait at all. All the other booths seemed pretty much the same way. Um, so it was nice to see the crowd. Uh, the event was very well put together. Uh, had a great time there. It was awesome. I got to totally agree with you about PAX, man. Like, you know, I've never been to PAX. I've never been to a gaming convention at all. In fact, the only thing I've ever done like that before was, like, I go to the Denver Comic Con with Sandra every year. But, like, I, I was wandering around PAX, you know, for a little while. And, like, I was kind of bored. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the... the the Bethesda event was packed full of people with the same interests. We could all talk about stuff we all had in common and were interested in. And the environment just felt much more like intimate, jovial, and like like friends hanging out, you know? Like, I did not have that experience at PAX. So, I'll say that uh, mine was a little bit different because I've been to a lot of conventions before. Um, they're kind of like a... They're very nostalgic for me. There was a time in my life where I was going very, very frequently to gaming conventions, comic conventions, etc. because it was part of my job. But yeah. uh, I was like a kid in a candy store at PAX. I, there was so much stuff that I wanted to see and I couldn't because of the long lines. So DTV does hit it uh, pretty well in the head. The lines were crazy long there, but I did see a lot of stuff that I wanted to see but couldn't because of the lines, you know, so I kind of feel a little yeah. bummed that I missed out. Um, things that I did make sure I went to go see though, like I'm a Discord partner, I stopped by their booth, I picked up some swag, I went to Direwolf Digital because I wanted to say hi to the guys, uh, I got yeah, to see I, Paul, I did that too, yeah. um, Maricon was there teaching people how to play Clank, I got to meet him in person, it was very brief but I was very excited, uh, made sure I met up with a couple of other Twitch streamers I know, took some pictures, did that kind of stuff, but, yeah. um, again, it's probably gonna make me sound like a shill, but... Uh, I also feel like the Bethesda experience was just significantly better. So if you guys aren't familiar with what they did, PAX took place in the convention center. And then there, just like across the street from the convention center was a hotel. And you could actually get from one to the other through like a walkway or you could just walk outside. Um, and then connected to the hotel is a comedy club called Laugh Boston. And Bethesda rented the entire comedy club out. You did not need a PAX Pass to get in, so even if you weren't going to the PAX show, you could show up to the Bethesda event. Um, there was a line to get in, like, well before the doors opened. There was a line basically for the entire time they were open, but people who did get in, there were different kinds of wristbands, and depending on your color, it gave you access to food and drinks. They had the event catered. Uh, there was a bar, because it is a comedy club, and they were serving drinks basically the entire night. Um, fun anecdotal story. Uh, Pete Hines was given a million interviews that night to various gaming news things and he was interviewing with one person and this dude had way too much to drink and like fell and almost landed right on Pete uh, <laughs> at one point like that was kind of awesome. uh, interesting but but to what they're saying like it was a very intimate event like it, it felt like you were you know imagine like walking around like a nightclub right or a comedy club but instead of a show it's just filled with people who love the same games that you do and instead of like, you know, like a comedian up on stage, it's people talking about games, right? So like we were up there for the podcast for part of it. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But uh, there was like people talking about Quake and Elder Scrolls Online. And then I'll uh, set up throughout, if you didn't look at the pictures that we were sharing in social media, they had stations where you could play the game. So you could play Quake, you could play Elder Scrolls uh, Online, you could play Elder Scrolls Legends. Um, the other takeaway was I saw a lot of people trying our game, Legends, for the first time. 
So that was very encouraging. Um, I got to personally talk to a lot of people who had card game backgrounds or mobile game backgrounds and get them excited, but it was just, their event was just so well organized and I enjoyed the layout and it was so intimate that I 100% agree. I, I think that their, their event like knocked it out of the park for what they were trying to do. And, <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, I, I love the computers they had set up for playing Legends. I've never played Legends on a touch, touch screen monitor before, and that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, all the accounts were fully stocked with brand with the entire you know selection of cards. So, and they were brand new accounts, so they were all sitting at rank twelve. So I'm sure that with some of the stupid things we were doing, <laughs> like we had a couple hours before the event opened, where I don't know about what you were doing, Charmer, but like I was building fully blinged out all premium tricolor decks and making people quit the game at rank 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At one point we had joked cause we had Justin CVH and myself there and we were like, Hey, there's a gauntlet run in this weekend. Yeah. We should all pick a deck and on the same account run yeah. a run and it would be like our child. But then that went out the I window cause it got busy. I I started it, man. I, I went one and zero in the gauntlet, and then, then, you know, I had shit to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it got really busy and we, we had a great yeah. time. Um, other content creators who were there. So we had DTB. It was wonderful meeting him. Uh, yes. Griffin Grasp, uh, Griffin Gasp, excuse me. I always do that. Uh, showed up. Uh, Ian Bits was there. Um, yep. Seth Dove, you might recognize uh, from around the community, yep. was there. You, we got to meet Yum Yum from Reddit, the moderator, in person. That was, yeah, that was cool. uh, very, very cool. Um, and, and more. And then I even met some other content creators who were thinking about getting into Legends. And I tried to give them the talk, like, hey, we're a great community. You know, you should join us. So that was great. Are you, are you talking about those dudes in the matching, like, like sweat whisking away jerseys? Uh, I didn't try to get them into making content. I tried to get them yeah. to play the game. I was talking about the guy with the really, really awesome handlebar mustache. Oh, yeah. That guy with that. that I, I didn't talk to him, but his mustache seemed pretty legit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, there was a, a lot of really uh, fun stuff going on. Oh, we got to meet the the other Bethesda folks. Uh, so I met Justin for the first time. I met CBH for the first time. We got to meet AJ, Pete, yeah. um, Matt, Grandstaff. <clears throat> yep. um, it was an absolute blast. I don't suppose you happen to have... I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say just all those people. I was yeah. just trailing off. No, you're good, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, the highlight for me was, um, I'll, to be honest with you, I had a lot of fun, uh, at the event. I had a lot of fun hanging out with you and CBH on Friday. And, uh, the highlight for me though, I have to be honest, was just getting to see Boston. Like I'd never been there before. The town was great. And, um, it was beautiful. All right. I gotta be honest. So my highlight for those of you who don't know, um, yeah. I'm a little more intense in person. I know that's a shock, but I'm, I'm like twice as many dad jokes in person. Um, yeah. So my highlight for me would just be, <laughs> yeah, but would, would just be like seeing people in their natural habitat. So Justin, if I had to describe Justin meeting him in person, he's every bit the Justin you think he is, but just like <laughs> more nervous and awkward. Like he's so adorable and he doesn't know it. I even told that to Sandra. Uh, Sandra was a blast as well because she tolerated me, which is all I can ask for. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I'm super dad joke, and I was constantly talking to strangers like we were best friends, yeah. uh, which was I think throwing people off. Uh, Dragon Tamer is uh, surprisingly not as intimidating in person as he looks uh, on stream. He he looks like a rough, tough, you know, southerner. Yeah. In person, he's kind of uh, <laughs> snuggly. Um, CVH is extra snuggly in person. That was uh, fun as well. Um, but so Justin, I, I mention it because like my highlight is he's he's an adorable ball of nerves. And before we went live on stage, like we did the sound check, <laughs> and that's when like I got my nerves out. I mean, I'm okay with talking in front of people because I teach and I've spoken at a lot of conventions as for, right. for previous jobs. So, like, I work my stuff out during soundcheck. Justin, however, he's, like, fine and cracking jokes during soundcheck, but before we go out on stage, he's, like, bouncing around like a boxer or backstage <laughs> trying to get loose before he goes. And then if you actually go back and watch the video, watch how much his foot moves, right? Like, he is totally a ball of nerves up there. 
And then when we play our video, which if you haven't seen that, go to Justin's YouTube channel, watch the House Sodius video. It's not necessary. Um, it's, <laughs> it's a blast. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but when we played that, he leans over to me and he just says, this is the most embarrassing moment of my life. And I said, really? Because cause you've been through a lot, man. Like, you've been through a lot. And he's like, yes, really. This is the most embarrassing moment of my life. Yeah. Well, most of the rest of that shit, dude, I was either high or like, <laughs> like, I put myself there. Yeah. So at that... some point I was like, you know, you know, it'd be a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then I followed through like, what the hell? Yeah. So that, that, that to me was my highlight was just, yeah. you know, getting to see everybody like in their, in their natural habitat. And, uh, yeah. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. And I look Speaking forward of... to doing it again. Speaking of things that people enjoy, are you familiar with our Lord and Savior, Nick Sox? I am. So, yeah, this is a good segue. So, talking about, uh, you know, the expansion. We're a couple weeks in now. And yeah. there are, as you can imagine, uh, some pain points. Uh, I expected something like this to happen. If you guys remember or if you were playing when Here's a Skyrim came out, uh, it came out. The meta was a Wild West for a week or two, and then something happened that caused the community to go into an uproar. In that case, it was Praetorian Commander and Echo of Akatosh. Yeah. The, the card uh, that is triggering it this time is Nyx Ox. And I think it's funny because all of the other combo pieces are cards that we basically had deemed unplayable... But both Justin and I, when we were doing our review, said out loud, keep an eye on it. Because these are the, the sorts of things that can be really powerful under the right circumstances. Yeah. And Nick Sox is apparently that circumstance. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I'll be honest with you, I haven't actually played against the Nick Sox combo deck. I've seen people do it on stream. Um, I, I like Nick Sox. I think... If it wasn't for other cards you could abuse the hell out of Nixox with, uh, I think Nixox is a reasonable, albeit very powerful card. Um, it just happens to do some degenerate things with Ulfric's Uprising and friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... Dragon Tamer posted a list in the chat there. So if you're not familiar with how this works, take a look at this. The deck is literally called Wombo Combo. Which is interesting because... Um... In the past, you know, when we talked about combo decks, you and I have always said that if a combo deck ever gets too strong yeah. in Legends, we know it'll be nerfed to the ground because there's no archetype that I think people hate playing against more than combo. Which is also yeah. weird because they're some of the most fun decks to play, but nothing. I think they are. <laughs> I've, I mean, I love a combo deck, but I'm not, I mean, you're, like I fell in love recently with uh, the Ring of Namira combo deck. Right. Yeah. So right? I hear you. I, yeah, I, I mean, they're fun to play. Like, have you ever played Wisp Raiders? Yeah. New version, old version? Fun, right? I played that like two years ago, brother. Right, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> they're fun, but they're only, like, allowed to exist because they're not consistent yeah. and whatever. Exactly. W Wisp Raiders is a fine deck because it's not good. Right. So the minute that, and we've said this for a while, the minute that a combo deck becomes, like, actually good and relevant, you know there's going to be an uprising, which is so funny because people always say, like, we really wish combo was a thing, and I always laugh because I'm like, no, you don't. The minute it is a thing, everyone's going to complain, and that's what's happening. There's going to be an Ulfric uprising, perhaps? <laughs> I mean, maybe. This is what happens when I spend time with you, is that like, I end up saying dumb shit like that. <laughs> First of all, everything that comes out of my mouth is amazing. Except yeah. for you. Oh. Well, hey! 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 <laughs> yeah. Um... So I wanna I wanna hear Tide, Tide so pods go in, dad jokes come out. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um so it's interesting because I I haven't played against it a lot on the ladder either. I think I've played against it once or twice, or at least what I suspect was the deck, but I I beat them. So yeah. I don't they like the combo didn't go off, so I just I the list looks semi familiar. Uh what about you, DTB? What's been your experience either playing with it or against it? Um if I have played against it, I either won or lost before it happened. Um, I think I've seen far more Tribunal Control so far this month than yeah. um, anything resembling this combo at all. Thank you, Blackfall. 
That is a good point. Um, I, you know, it's interesting because like, I, I do, I do want to talk more about Nick Sox, but I need to say about Black Falls Control Deck. Like, I personally have always enjoyed Black Falls Company. I, I liked talking to him for a while now, but like, he's he's kind of a polarizing figure in the community, right? Some people really like him. Some people don't. the The response to his deck, his Tribunal Control deck, that like the day after he posted it, was like no response to a net deck uh, in the Legends community that I have ever seen. Like it became every matchup I played for a while was against Tribunal Control. Yeah, I think, I think honestly, it was just kind of like a uh, a perfect storm of events to allow that to happen. So hear me out. The only time I've seen something close was after. Namira Shrine Doomcrag Warrior came out recently. I, oh, yeah. I played against a lot of that, but I, I think Tribunal Control got more representation because uh, it was a new tricolor deck. People are itching to try tricolors. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was a deck that if you've played Control in the past, you already probably had a lot of the cards, whereas people who yeah. weren't looking to play Doomcrag might not have had Doomcrags. Um, and it's a, it's a deck archetype that when you hear Blackfall, like, you just think Control, right? Yeah. Say what you want about the guy. Like, he's known for playing Control in the community, so yeah. if it's a Blackfall-endorsed Control deck that most people have the cards for and it scratches an itch for this expansion, like, I think that's the perfect storm for why we saw so much of it. Yeah, I mean, you're right. The guy's got a lot of credibility when it comes to this kind of deck, and uh, people wanted to play Tribunal. It was sort of the thing, too. It was one of the decks that, like, it was one of the, the new classes that left the preview event without, like, an idea of where it was going. You know, as far as, like, decks people posted. I didn't even try to brew with it on the test servers, to be honest with you. So back to the Nixox thing, right? Yeah. In theory, Nixox can do a lot of broken things. Yeah. Um, and I think that you know, hold on. I got a Twitch drop, so I'm actually gonna I'm checking out, guys. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. So okay. I think that the interesting thing about Nixox, right, is that it's not like Wisp Raiders or Ring and Amira, where it's like you get the combo or bust. It's that yeah. Nixox makes it so that you can do a lot of potentially broken things, and it's not like you have to have like all of the you know I'll put air quotes around this the combo pieces for it to work. Like one of the yeah. combos is Nyx Ox plus Doppelganger um, plus like Ulfrix Uprising and some other cards and you can basically get to like, uh, you know, Infinite Magicka or whatever, right? Like it's like five or six card combo, right? But that's mm. that's the one that like people look at and that's broken. <laughs> Mentor's Ring gets thrown in often because you can give everything charge. Yeah. Um, but like even if you don't do that, just with like Nyx Ox, Doppelganger and Uprising... Uh, you can cheat out a Perthernex super early, right? Like, there's a lot of yeah. things you can do. So I think that the reason that this deck is more consistent and thus more polarizing than previous decks is because Nyx acts as an enabler for many broken things and not just a single broken thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, I, I hear what you're saying. I... I... I, I mean, I've only used Nick's Ox in like what could like like fair ways, um, but I I, I I fall on the side of the card needs a nerf. Even the, even though uh, you haven't seen it, I know it did really well in a tournament recently. And no, I mean, like I've watched I've watched videos of people doing it. Sure, I, I did that actually in preparation for this show. <laughs> so I, again, full disclosure, I don't, I don't watch Twitch. <laughs> You are killing me, man. You are such... You are, like, the worst part of our community. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I said it. Justin Larson, worst part of our community. Throws his stuff out yeah. there, doesn't support. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I, I'm all over the place supporting this. Thing. I know, I know. I poke. I just don't have any free time. I, I'm interested to see how the Elder Scrolls Legends Champion Series tournament tomorrow goes. I know that, you know, you uh, behind the scenes, you and I were asked, you know, do we think, along with other people who are involved in that, were asked, you know, our opinions on needing a ban and stuff. And I, as far as that goes, I said no. I said I don't think anything needs a ban yet. Uh, because I think I want to see everybody bring Nexox decks to the tournament and the ban be necessary. 
<laughs> See, I really hope that somebody counter counter techs, right? Because I think that a deck like Nixox performs the way that it does because it's new, it's flashy, it's fun, yeah. and it's seeing results, and so people are panicking. But I don't think that the deck is unbeatable. And I think yeah. even more so in a tournament format where you expect to see it, I think that if people bring the right lists and then thus showcase, hey, I'm getting results against Nixox with this, you might see more of those. Specifically, uh, I think Midrange Warrior and Midrange Crusader both have really good matchups against it. Um, I think Sorcerer could also go there, but I think that... So obviously Warrior is the best... Uh, you would yeah. basically break out a version of my old like anti-control warrior where you're running Withered Hand Cultists, where you're running uh, Wrath of Sithis, where you're running Garnag. All of those are certainly a thorn in the side, and so if you generate enough pressure and you can get like any of those active, you can um, at least disrupt them, right? Sometimes a turn or two is all you need. Uh, same thing goes with Midrange Crusader. You don't get Wrath of Sithis, but you do still have Withered Hand Cultists, you do still have Garnag. Uh, and there's a lot of, I think, good tools there and some new tools even that uh, make that a winnable matchup. Um, yeah, I, th I think that the deck can be beaten. Now, it might not be the decks people want to play, and that's a fair criticism, right? It might not be, like, fun that, hey, Nixox is a thing, so I'm forced to play these other decks. But, like, sometimes that's the rock, paper, scissors that we live in in a meta, so... <clears throat> Dragon Tamer, we're going to need you to break this tie here. So for me, the thing that I find most interesting about this combo is when you look at other combo decks, so like generic market list, yeah. you either draw your market to no zero cost, combo sucks. Yeah. You draw your zero cost, no market, combo sucks. Same yeah. thing with Wisp Raiders, other similar combo desk, decks. Yeah. I look at the combo pieces for this deck, and I can't really point at a card that, besides possibly Doppelganger, I can't point at a combo piece that I'm not just as happy playing as a card. So you got Nixox, 5-5 uh, five, five yeah. for 1. Lanith, great card. Parthenax, great card. Obviously, Ulfric's Uprising relies on a board, like Therana, Doppelganger, and then even yeah. the, the combo inside the combo deck of Therana with Drain Vitalities. Yeah. I don't feel bad about playing any of that. And then you combine them all together, and it becomes kind of insane. So that's, that's I think, makes it a, a unique combo deck versus what we've seen before. It reminds me, I mean, like, I hear what you're saying. Um, yeah. I, I'm going to I'm gonna lean towards you agree with me, so I, I support your, your opinion. So, so but given what he just said, <laughs> hear me out, though, all right? So given what he just said... I think let's we say, settled the discussion. No, let's, let's say you nerf Nixox, right? Nixox yeah. is gone. So at yeah. worst, given that he said, I'm okay with playing all of these other cards... Let's say Nixox is gone, and then because of the lost value there, Ulfric's Uprising also gone. Yeah. You're still going to end up playing against really annoying, you know, assassin potentially based decks that have all of those other things, though. Yeah. Right? Well, look, assassin's a good choice right now. So is Telvanni. They just. The difference is, is that, like. I feel like. I feel like, uh, like, uh. Well, I, I'll be honest. I don't like combo decks in general. <laughs> I guess like, that's where I'm coming from. I, I think that in a game where, uh, you know, you have to battle for control of the board because, like, the onus for, for uh, combat is on the attacker. Um, and, this, you know, thereby giving an advantage to the attacker. I think that... Uh, I just feel that having a random I win button in a in a game that... As so many you know, intricate, intricate decisions that need to be made uh, in a mid range or control deck, as far as trading goes, giving them an I win button that can happen turn six, seven, or eight is it, just, it breaks it. It breaks it for me. I don't mind if an aggro deck, I mean, like, I complain about aggro, but like, I know aggro needs to exist, and I don't mind that an aggro deck wins on turn five, six, or seven because, like, they're sacrificing something huge for that opportunity. If you want to win with an assassin deck that's playing long, if you want to win with a Telvanni deck that's playing value. Awesome. I mean, it's it's playing long, but I guess I got, what I'm trying to say is that it doesn't have to play that much longer. Yeah. Right? It might not be a one-turn combo, and it might not be as like consistently turn seven, 
but like everybody's complaint is that it has no problem surviving until it gets the combo. And I guess my my point is is if you nerf Nixox, it just means that they went on turn like ten instead of turn seven or whatever. But they're still going to do it, and they're still going to use all and use and abuse all those other pieces. Um, I mean, life finds I, a way. I guess is what I'm trying to say. But look at like the other combo decks we mentioned, right? Like Wisp Raiders and uh, Ring of Namira are really like the the actual OTK combos, right? Um, you can't. I mean, like I'm trying to think of the earliest you can go off with either one of them, right? Like, and the thing is, is that like you can't set all the pieces on the board in one turn without 13 Magicka in Ring of Namira's case, or um in Whisperator's case i mean uh, you need you need at least 10 11 right and and a very specific looking board i mean yeah if you're trying to go like straight played from hand but if you, if the answer to your question right. is what's the earliest you can do it like the answer with both of those is technically turn 7 as well right it just requires you to play either ring of namira right, right. or Whismother the turn before go unanswered right. and then go off but similarly yeah. like when you get to turn seven if you're just trying to like a hundred percent outright win on turn seven i'm not saying nixox can't do it but the number of yeah. cards that it needs in hand in order to do it is still pretty high right like you have to make it to turn seven and still have like three or four cards in hand that are all your perfect combo pieces because you have to have the ox yeah. you have to have a doppelganger you have to have an uprising and then you also have to likely have like Lanneth to find your other stuff and start going, right? So you're talking like, th you know, three or four cards to like really kick this off on turn seven. And it has to be like the right ones. So while it can do it that early, I don't think that it does it often that early. I think it likely more consistently does it in the later turns the same way that the other decks would. But you know, it's something we talked about a lot when the show first started was like, the difference between perceived power level and like perceived problems with the meta and like yeah. actual problems with the meta and like people are hungry for blood here you know like for nixox blood yeah no that <laughs> i mean that that is, and that is a legitimate point um and it's not you know what i'll contest it's uh yeah. you know whether or not it's a balance is not gonna hundred whether it's balanced as we found out with you know echo vacatosh and praetorian commander isn't sometimes going to be the deciding factor on whether something gets a nerf hammer yeah like i know that i've uh used this story in the past so i apologize for retreading it on the cast but um back when i played magic affinity after mirrodin came out was everywhere and it yep. was hit hard with uh some nerfs and or bans at the time because it was everywhere but it wasn't unbeatable right like you could play and tech against it and beat it really consistently right, right. but nobody the problem was nobody wanted to do it and there's that whole like just because something has an answer doesn't mean that's the answer i want to play <clears throat> right yeah so and look at it like this too, right? Like Nixox is such a strange card that, I mean, if you play it fairly, right? Like you can play it in like I play it in an altar deck, and I don't do anything particularly, ch you know, chicanerous with it. But like, I could, I would not lose. It would not make fair decks less fun to nerf Nixox. There are a lot of reasonable replacements. Nixox isn't even the best card in that slot in a lot of decks. I don't think we'd lose anything besides the combo deck if that card got hit. What if... So people have talked about different ways to nerf it, right? Some people are talking about hit yeah. the Magicka generation. Some people are talking about, uh, you know, on turn seven, you change its cost to one. Um, yeah. What if it was something like that, but it was scaling, right? Like, I think about how we have Alduin, and Alduin, you know, has the 20 cost, but it goes down based on events. What if Nixox said, like... Uh, you know, it costs like 13 or 14 Magicka, but its cost goes down by one each turn, regardless of its location. So like if you draw it on turn seven, it costs one. Or even if you get on like turn eight, maybe you can play it for free. But on those earlier turns, it's, you know, that much more expensive. I mean, if we could nerf Nixox to Alduin's power level, <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> 
Uh, thanks for the cheer, Dr. Eagle Talon. Sorry, the notifications are off during the podcast for recording, but we do see it and we do appreciate it. You know, I th- actually, I think I saw Dr. Eagle, Eagle Town posting on Reddit uh, saying that he wants to start some kind of podcast. Or panel or community run thing, but yes. So yeah. if you're interested, contact. I mean, there's definitely a need for it, right? Like, the game does not have a quality podcast this time. <laughs> no, I mean, Ian Bits said so. Yeah. On Reddit. Oh, yeah, he did, didn't he? He did. He said we need a good one. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, Hannibal in chat does say, you know, it's broken if you need only a specific deck to have a slight chance to win. But here's the thing. Uh, we both, we all said earlier, like we haven't seen a lot of it. And when we have seen it, we, we don't, we're not hundred percent sure if it was that or not because we were beating it. And I don't think it's a specific yeah. deck. I think it's a spe- specific deck archetype. Um, right. and I think it's a lot more than a, a slight chance to win. I, I think that the deck does have weaknesses. I think that it is certainly beatable. It's just yeah. not everyone likes playing mid range, and certainly well, ask... red based mid range. You know, I, my response to just play devil's advocate here though is that like, first of all, I, I mean you know we give each other a lot of shit about not being great players, but we are certainly entrenched players, right? So like our gameplay experience is not going to be the same for the for everybody who's like yes running into this randomly. Okay, like I, you know, I, I you know I just. I, that, I keep I like to keep that in mind. You know, I, I make that argument when I talk about like things like meta reports and stuff. How that information is just super biased, and so our experiences against this deck are not going to be the average person's. And and additionally, like uh, I had a second point, and I can't remember at all what it was. What were we talking about? <laughs> I don't Dude, know. I'm in this. I'm in this fucking career counseling. Like I'm learning to like administer the uh, this personality test that I took today. Um, and now I don't remember the name of that either because I came home and I recorded a gauntlet run well if if DTB would stop problem. interrupting he's way too chatty I don't know Dude, why we had him on say anything. Like, I'm intentionally derailing co- the conversation right <laughs> well, isn't that person I think Myers is, is here's the Myers Briggs or something like that yeah, Myers, yes like, he did Myers Briggs and if you're trying to derail it Justin let me just say yeah. mission accomplished <laughs> oh you know that's that's a phrase that people use when they've they've successfully done something really spectacular. Yeah, like bomb Syria. Somebody Huge in chat success. says, "Dark Dark College says Justin took a personality test and it came up negative." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, dude. That's true. It did. No, what did it come up? Let me check. Hold on. Uh, I I'm didn't, say didn't extrovert. Did, um his his yeah. results were like e penis right <laughs> i think that i think that goes without saying he's got the biggest e peen all of his friends tell him justin you have the best e peen he's got a like yeah. e p f and peen e n f p that was close it's just like creative energetic yeah this is boring i don't know why i brought this up <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm tired dude i'm super fucking tired Hey, where did <laughs> did I ever repeat that bug with Genius Pathmage? Yeah, Kazoo Croc. It happens every single time. I if think the Necromancer summon... does it too. Yeah, if you summon Genius Pathmage to a full lane, it doesn't summon anything. Even if it's uh, got space in the other lane, huh? Yeah. Oh, interesting. I've been playing a lot of Genius Pathmage. I've been playing this really sweet alter deck, right? Like this Tobani alter deck that I'm fourteen and one with now in the ladder. And. uh... It's got a couple. It uses see, it uses Nick Nick Sox, I think in in the in the fair way, right? And it uses things like um, Genius Path Mage for similar like you know shenanigans. Uh, you just you have these explosive mid range turns to beat control decks, but you also have the backup plan of using the altar to generate like something approaching infinite value. So like you never lose versus tribunal control. I mean, like, I, I take that back. I lost in the gauntlet to, contra- to a tribunal control deck that just started going face with Daggerfall Mages and shit, and I didn't have any answers. <laughs> 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 so that happens, right? It turns out all that damage-based removal sucks against ward creatures. But, um, and, and then you beat aggro because you're running Sorcerer's Negation, Firebolt, Lightning Bolt, Guard Creatures, Ice Storms, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I've been having a really great... It's It's my favorite deck from the expansion so far. I guess I'll put it like that. 
Myers Briggs is horoscopes for people who think they're too smart for horoscopes. I don't know, man. So like, as a precursor, like learning how to administer it, we took it, and like, I, I don't know. It, it feel I feel like my test results describe me pretty well. Yeah. But then again, like, I'm, then again, I'm a Pisces, so like, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> is that is that real life right now? Yeah. What do you what? I mean, look, Nick Sox, we could go back and forth on this forever. I think that like it's fair to say like Nick Sox will be nerfed. I'm just going to be honest, especially if it has the showing in tomorrow's tournament that I expect it to. Um, that said, like, what have you guys had the most fun with since the expansion dropped? You know, what's your your favorite deck? I don't even know. I've been all over the fucking place lately. I don't, I don't think I've played the same deck more than like a day in a row since the expansion launched, and I still yeah. have such a backlog of stuff I'm trying to get through. Well, I can respect that. I mean, that's fair, but that also means you should have a pretty sizable, like, pool to pick a favorite from. Well, I will say, DTB, that, like, your early work with the Skell Sword deck, the Skeleton Tribal thing, really got me thinking. And I think a lot of people started, like, looking at Skeleton Tribal after you started doing something with it on the test servers. And the cool thing about that deck, though, is, like, I threw Spell Sword together just because I wanted removal for all those rally creatures that were going crazy on the, the test yeah. server. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, the core of the deck is, like, 38 or something like that purple card. So you can toss yeah. that into, like, any class you want. Yeah. Uh, I saw people talking about uh, Skeleton Scout, and I was like, that's completely fine and reasonable. Yeah. Skeleton Sorcerer, completely fine and reasonable. It, it It's cool and flexible like that. I don't know how truly powerful it is. My win rate's pretty good, but yeah, I'm also not in Legend yet because I'm lazy. No, dude, I, I don't read really Legend until like the last week of the season. <laughs> I got a lot of games I gotta lose with monocolor decks and shit like that. <laughs> what about you, man? What about you, Charmer? Um I mean I, I really enjoy mid range in this game. I don't know why. I'm I'm yeah. usually drawn to it, so Yeah. Sorcerer's been fun. Uh mid mage in the small sample size I've played with it so far has been overperforming. Um, was that was that the deck that I saw you playing with couple nights ago or yeah when time? i blue screen to death and bailed out <laughs> yeah you're um, gonna have to be more specific <laughs> yeah i mean yeah um mid crusader i like i actually have a mid crusader that doesn't run hive defender right it's like one of the first times i've ever ran willpower and not thrown in hive defender um but that's been performing pretty well for me and then uh halalu like charge based deck very similar to the deck that i think you played justin uh, my build yeah. is a little bit off, but it was something that I had also built. Basically, when I had the idea, I was thinking to myself, what if we took like the shell of the old SLW Math Crusader yeah. and threw in uh, card draw, cliff racers, and the new uh, Haunted Manor, right? Like that was the core I started with, and then I kind oh, of I filled it out. Um, because if if you remember, right, like, Math Crusader had a lot of card draw and a lot yep. of like chargers, and it was certainly playing multiple cards a turn. So I was like, okay, well, the manor triggers every second. That's going to be easy. I think my version might run Namira Shrine too. I'd have to go back and look, but it was just like. Man, the more I play with Namira Shrine, the more I think it should be in every deck. It's <laughs> so good. So. Yeah, that's the one I've been having the most fun with. Um, I can only play it at certain times of the day, though, because it requires math, and I'm tired. But, uh, yeah, Halalu, I thought it was going to end up being, like, one of the worse houses, and it's been pretty successful. I think that it might be safe to say that it has the worst, like, auto-include. Right? When you think about the leaders that you have to include, just because he doesn't count himself when you play him... I don't know, man. Like you, un like you untap with Duke. I think you win the game. <laughs> you think so? Like I know there's a lot of cards that, like, if you put your opponent in top deck mode, you can ride to victory. But like Duke is it, Duke is a genius path mage or altar type card, right? Like, I mean, he is, and I'm not saying that the the possibilities aren't like amazing with him. Yeah. But I guess for me, like. In that same deck, right? Like, I run Duke because I have to, but I also run Mark Hearth yeah. Bannerman. And if you, if I have both in my hand, I'm going to play the Mark Hearth Bannerman first because I think that does well, more for me. Duke is a control card. Well, the, this is a control deck, though. Yeah. Like, it's Math Crusader. That was, a, that was a control deck. That's fair. 
I mean, like, I will say, like, I think I said to you earlier, maybe, that I think that Haunted Manor would be broken as a two-color card. Oh, yeah. Honestly, I think that deck is already pretty nuts, and nobody's even come close to, like, a refined list. Like, I, agree. I feel like once yeah. somebody sits down and fully figures that deck out, it's going to be, like, busted. Yeah, I agree completely. Um, I, I mean, I've been, I toyed around with a uh, list from Burn, and it was a, uh, you know, an admittedly unrefined list he had, but, like, I, it was one of those decks that, like, I could feel myself getting strong, like, I was growing stronger with it as I learned how to play it. Because, you know, I, I my first, it's got, look, it's got Lord Firebrand, and I was like, oh, this is a face deck. <laughs> I can, ca I can count to 30. <laughs> and, uh, and played it like that, and um, lost my first game. Played three more, and as I started figuring the ins and outs of it out, and realizing that like it had the tools to fight for the board, like very few decks I've ever played before that are so creature based, I couldn't lose. Part of the problem with things, I think, though, with decks like that is that like uh, I think you know, you, like you you win because you can take control of the board with your creatures against decks like Redoran and against decks like you know Sorcerer and, and Warrior and shit. In theory, like that's the sort of thing you're equipped to do. I don't know how like like I've never lost a Halalu deck with Telvanni Altar, for instance. Right? Like it doesn't really matter like that you're playing these cute little plot creatures and you have these little tricks you're pulling and stuff. Like that's cool. They're doing like truly degenerate stuff after about turn eight. So like. You knock yourself out with your tricks, you know. So, what has underperformed in your mind? Like, what did you think was going to be really good that has just been kind of meh? Unite the Houses. <laughs> Every game that I like play with the Unite the Houses deck, I win before I can play Unite the Houses. Because they're just they're just like. I just, well, in my in my case, I built a Tribunal Control deck that's just, like, Support Mage plus, like, some obnoxious purple cards. And, uh, you know, like, they, that deck's real good at, like, making it so, like, you're going to win in 20 turns. But Support Mage has been around long enough that people just concede at that point now, and they don't let you unite the houses. <laughs> plus, I feel like if you get to the point where you're, like, running these, like, weird value generation cards trying to hit these other colors... If you've got the Magicka and the Tempo availability to be dropping these cards down, yeah, you're probably in control of the game anyway, and you're good to just beat them down. Yeah, I agree. What about the you? Interest, the interesting mirror would be... I mean, like, the interesting houses, Unite the Houses game is the house Unite the Houses mirror. <laughs> because yeah. I'm a sadist. <laughs> so, so let me get this straight. Let me let me just stop. Yeah, you're you're generally against unite the or against combo, but like you were pro unite the houses. Yeah, no alternate win conditions are not are not combo decks. Yeah, they because are. Like, it's look. literally look no 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 hear me out look, right look, no look, wait 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 look. you you play the unite the houses is the perfect example of this right you play cards and then you auto win and. That's right. Nick Sox combo is you play cards that like result in an auto win and yeah. yeah, but I mean to be totally frank, like what what separates them is like why Wisp Raiders is okay because Unite the Houses is bad. <laughs> <laughs> so because far, it's, you wait. It's, Someone's gonna it's refine novel, it, right? Like that's that's what's great about it. Like like randomly winning a game with Unite the Houses with Yarl Balgriff, like with Wisp Raiders and with the Ring of the Mirror combo is okay because like. If you're the type of person who's playing, like, I don't want to ever reach a point where a spike is like, I'm taking a combo deck to this tournament. Because that suggests, like, a degeneracy of, like, design. Like, if the people <laughs> who want to win in some stupid way are people like me who want to play the game in a stupid way all the time, like, great, those cards exist for me. You know? Like, like, Parthenax exists for the guy who wants to play powerful cards. Alduin exists for the guy who wants to play stupid cards. <laughs> like I like Alduin more than I like Parthenax. So like when I play Unite the Houses decks, I'm okay with it like in in principle because it's not a competitive card. I think it also depends on like the meta though. So like for my personal experience, one of my favorite decks that I've ever made was Action Market Assassin. In yeah. general, below average combo deck. 
Yeah. Uh, but back when Support Mage was God, and they were so good at removing the entire board, and basically anything you put on the board was getting answered, that deck had like an 80-something percent win rate that season because there was so much Support Mage that I was able to kind of avoid the board, hoard actions, drop a Hex Mage or something stupid like that, and burst them down. In that type yeah. of situation where Support Mage is so common, I'm fine with the combo deck having that kind of win rate because it's kind of a tech countered combo deck. Yeah. It's not like I had 80% win rate against the world. It was yeah. just the common deck. I see. I, I totally, I always forget about Splinter or Splinter. Jesus. I'm reading chat. <laughs> I always, I always forget about, uh, about Swindler's market, but like, that's a, you're totally right. Like that's a deck that in the right circumstances is really, really strong or, or can be until Dushnik Yell Archer was printed, frankly. Mm -hmm. But like, and I love playing that deck and I have some great videos of me just like popping on the ladder with it. Cause like, I wanted to do something stupid. Uh, and, I, and I've even brought that deck to a tournament, but I'm also not a spike. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just ask you like a philosophical question, right? What's the difference like between a combo deck that plays defensively and survives until let's just arbitrarily say like turn 10 yeah. and then wins with its combo Versus like a control deck that just arbitrarily plays defensively till turn 10, at which point, even though it might not auto win, has yeah. created a state where like the win is guaranteed and it's just up to the opponent to concede if they don't want it to take 10 more minutes. Uh, until like, well, there was like, I, I see what you're saying, right? And there's a power level at which decks like support mage in particular, uh, the support mage of old and, um, Support Mage is really the worst defender of this because it's capable of creating board states where it can g g gain over time infinite life. Um, like, the Prophecy system usually allows for, you know, like, the game's well enough balanced, let me put it like this, that, like, if a control deck decides to push face to win, the, to turn the game around too quickly, they can end up losing the game for themselves, right? Um, there's a power level at which a, 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 if a control deck has the ability to Put itself well beyond that ability for the opponent to come back becomes problematic in power level in my opinion it screws with the balance of the game um that's the difference in my mind between a control deck that's going to kill you with a manticora swing uh in my manticora alpha strike on turn 20 and a uh, uh a whisperator combo deck that just like clears the board until turn 15 or a Steeler of Secrets combo deck. Steeler of Secrets is another great example of a totally reasonable combo deck because Steeler of Secrets is not great. <laughs> but very satisfying. The, th the thing is, is like the level of interaction that would be necessary between players, like uh, in order to like allow for potentially competitive combo decks, is like non unique uh, gentleman Jim guy. Uh, and, and like more than one of those, I mean, even Gentleman Jam is a card. I don't know that it, I, I'm, I'm okay with it existing. Yeah. You know, I, I just see, like, I just pose the question because realistically, like the hidden question and the answer I was interested in behind is like, what, what do you guys think? And this goes, you know, to you DTV as well, right? What do you think is the acceptable turn to have a game like truly decided on? Because there are plenty of control decks where like on turn 10, the game is decided. Now it might take like 10 more turns or whatever, but at that point, like they've survived the onslaught. The opponent has one or two cards left. You're at a safe health point and you've got, you know, five or six cards still in your hand. It's all defensive. You know what I mean? Like we've all been there. We all know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, versus like a combo deck that maybe on the exact same turn number just wins immediately, but it does it in a far flashier fashion and thus, like, makes people angry. Like, this reminds me of Unstoppable Rage in many ways, too, right? Like, the Unstoppable Rage decks, um, you know, when that came out and everyone was up in arms about that deck, I kept saying, you know, a lot of times it was the same as losing to Control Mage. The only difference is, is Rage did it all in one go, and the Control Mage dragged it out for 10 more turns, right? Yeah. So players might feel like, oh, I still have a chance, but the truth is they never had any chance. It's just one, like, led them on, right? It's it's the stripper versus the outright rejection. One of you, one of them leads you on and makes you think there's still hope, and the other person just outright says no, but the truth is you weren't getting any either way. So, to no, me... I have an answer, man. The turn is 16. The turn is 16 for you? What, what I'm am... actually totally serious. The turn is 16. 
That's the turn after his. That's the turn you can attack with his grove if <laughs> if everything's going reasonably well for you. What about uh, what about you, DTB? If you if you had to pick an acceptable turn for games to be consistently closed out on. Or a combo deck or decks in general? Well, I mean decks in general, because I, I, in my opinion, I don't think that you can um, weigh one deck archetype worse than another, right? Like, if aggro decks are going to consistently win a game on, like, turn seven, and control can consistently on, let's just, again, hypothetically say, close out uh, games on turn nine, right? Like, they might not win, but let's say close out games on turn nine. I think it's unfair to say, well, it's okay for aggro at seven, it's okay for control on nine, but combo decks have to wait till 13. Like, to me, it's, you know, what what is the turn where you think it's acceptable for decks to have relatively decided the outcome one way or the other, win or lose? Like, what is your target uh, spot, you know? See, for me, the thing that I find interesting about control decks in this game is... And I, I have limited card game experience, so I'm talking like some Yu-Gi-Oh as a kid and then some Hearthstone before this. In this game, most combo decks, uh, besides maybe like a Bog Lurcher, Unstoppable Rage, un Improvised Weapon, can't all be played and win from hand in one turn usually. So it's, you usually don't go from zero to dead without at least some potential to answer. Um, and the way that kind of tends to lead into most combo decks in this game being slightly more control oriented because you have to get to that late game and then slowly set up your combo over the course of one or two turns. Um, so to that end, I would say around turn 10, 12, similar to a control deck is when a combo deck starts getting ready to win. Um, but I think the point where a lot of people start not liking combo decks is that fun factor. So the developers talk about it all the time. And as somebody who's studied game design, it's something that comes up a lot too, is something can be perfectly fair but if it feels really really bad to lose to which if i have complete control of the board and turn 12 you just drop some super mega combo from hand and i lose it feels shitty yeah so i i think that's the, the difference of in this game you're kind of forced for the most part besides certain fringe cases with certain special board states you have to take that one to two turns of let me play my ring of namira out this turn or let me play something on the board to try and set up for that swing next turn. And if my opponent doesn't answer it, good, I win, I deserve it. They had a chance, they didn't get it. It's not like you could just do it all in one go, usually. Yeah, I mean, there are certainly decks that you can do it all in one go, but... Yeah, I mean, I guess Steeler Secrets can if you manage to spell, you know, cast 29 actions previously. <laughs> Steeler Secrets can, Whisper Eaters can, Ring and Amira can. They all have the ability to. Um, and even those, besides Steelers, um, Whisper Eaters and Ring and Amira got nerfed to at least allow the potential for an right. answer. Yeah, it's, it's sure. not super common, but it's at least a shot. But again, so, you know, what, what I want to point out, though, is those were nerfed in part because of the feeling you were talking about right mm -hmm. and so it's that and and i get it and i'm not going to say that nerfing for feelings is necessarily bad because you know something can be fair but if everybody hates it then nobody plays your game and what's the point of having a fair and balanced game if nobody's playing it like i get it but there is the part of me you know one of the million jobs that i have is uh, is a teacher and so I like to ask leading questions because as uh, my job as a teacher, I like to get people to think about things in a new light, right? So yeah. um, I just like posing the question of, you know, if an aggro deck is going to decide a game by a certain turn and a control deck is going to decide a game by a certain turn, you know, how is it any different, right? If a combo deck does it, and you're right, it's entirely just the experience. One feels worse than the other because all of those are, are gradual, right? The aggro deck doesn't do it all in one go. It's you know, a series of uh, series of jabs, right? Control decks win by like, you know, it's death by a million paper cuts essentially over the course of a game. It's, at least that's what it feels like. It's slow and painful and torturous. Um, and then combo decks just win all in one go. And I think that catches people by surprise because they were like, well, I thought I was doing well and then I lost and I don't even necessarily understand why I lost or I didn't see it coming. Um, so now I feel inferior as a human being because I don't know what happened. And you know what I mean? Like, I get it. I know why it it feels the way that it does. Um, but like, I just, you know, I like to ask those leading questions and say like, you know, why is one acceptable when one isn't? And, and so on and so forth. 
think it also depends on the difficulty of said combo. So, like, the reason why I don't think anybody ever really complains, besides when Justin makes it look way too good, about, like, the Ring of Namira combo deck is it requires, up until recently, Ring of Namira and two of a three of to really work. Yeah. So you need a very specific set of cards. So to get to that very specific set of cards, you need incredibly lucky draw, yeah. or you need to work hard for it. Right. Uh, yeah. Stealer of Secrets, when somebody's playing that deck, it is painfully obvious they're playing a Stealer of Secrets deck. So yeah. you know what you're going up against, and you know what you need to start doing. Um, so I, I personally don't have a problem with most combo decks in this game. I think the only play, point where I would start having a problem where if too many pieces of said combos became interchangeable to where the combo ceased being difficult to set up anymore. So did you play Hearthstone at all, Dragon, before coming uh, to Legends? Very little, mostly Tavern Brawls, but I do watch a lot of Hearthstone just because there's Dude, some, I, some I good guys too. out there. I, I watch Hearthstone too. All right, so... Because CVH said something on Twitter today. Fuck the Shutterwalk before and, we get into uh, it. <laughs> and, and I kind of agreed with his, his assessment. Um, and so I kind of want to... I want to just throw this out to you guys. This will be like the last thing we like beat on this topic before we go to the interactive part of the podcast. Oh he, god, that's the worst part. <laughs> right? He said that uh, modern Nixox combo decks, as they exist right now, yeah. are to this game what Grim Patron used to be to Hearthstone. Yeah. Potentially the best deck in the game. Yeah. Uh, combo oriented and very difficult to pilot but the people who yeah. do pilot it well can do so at a high level and blah 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 so like obviously justin agrees because yes. he jumped right in i totally agree i was gonna bring up grim patron earlier yeah yeah do you think that's fair um i got more into it towards i think it was right around actually patron getting nerfed yeah um but I also think that's where our game kind of differentiates itself a little bit is with the lane system and you got instant cover in the shadow lane. Uh, like even in like the, the the heyday of Grim Patron, super, super powerful. But in Hearthstone, you can just throw up one beefy guard or they have like classes have two, three, four, five types of premium board clears in a 30 card deck that you can draw pretty easily. Um, so while, yeah, that deck I'm sure was really, really shitty to go against. I feel like a kind of wombo combo like that goes more easily answered in Hearthstone than in our game. Hearthstone also sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, we spent this whole, it's, it's unfortunate that we spent this whole time talking about Nixox, right? Because, like, I've had more fun brewing decks in the last two weeks than, like, I've had playing this game in a long time, you know? I love these. I love every fucking card in the set. I even think Nixox is a lot of fun uh, for what I'm using it for. But, uh, you know. Partially just to end the discussion, I want Nixox nerfed. Not this I just discussion, don't want the spirit of the discussion. card. The spirit of the card? It's supposed to be like this, like, nice, like, high tempo plot enabler kind of, like, almost See, free card. I... So I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I don't think that we know what the spirit of the card is. We've certainly never heard a developer say, hey, this is what, you know, we want to use it for. Like, they just, they didn't, they didn't do anything but release it into the wild, right? In it's fact, true. in but... fact, I'm going to go the exact opposite and say this is exactly the spirit of the card. Because otherwise, why would they have given us puzzles that show us how to get infinite magica in the puzzle? Spoiler. That actually was something I wanted to bring up. Is Spoiler I, I alert. Think we would have caught this deck anyway, because we have a lot of really smart people in this community making decks. Uh, but I think the existence of that puzzle, um, I can't prove this because I wasn't involved in the making of that deck, but I think the existence of that puzzle probably hit the gas pedal on this deck existing or that combo existing. I can see that. Yeah. I was super fucking bummed. I was playing the puzzles on my way home from from work. Thursday the night, the day the expansion's released. I got to leave Friday morning for, for for fucking packs. So I'm playing the puzzles driving home. And uh, I saw the one where you use Galen to shuffle Bolden into your deck. And I was like, mm -hmm. dude, that was what I was going to do when I got <laughs> And I did it, but like it was still a yeah. little heartbreaking. Yeah. 
Yes. Hey, right. as we transition more to the interactive part of the podcast, Maricon, hello. It was yes, wonderful welcome. actually meeting you in person, even if yes. it was so, so brief. So I apologize about that, but that was fantastic. We got a copy of The Mummy's Curse, uh, The Mummy uh, Clank expansion. It's it's awesome. Also, what do you what are your thoughts on Nick's on Nick Sox? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's another part of me that just wonders if maybe, maybe there's, you know, more counters to be explored. More, like I, I know everyone's saying it's breaking the game right now, but like I remember when everyone said the exact same thing about Unstoppable Rage for two weeks. So, Unstoppable Rage got nerfed. Yeah, like a year <laughs> later. <laughs> After I changed my mind about it too. Yeah. Well, to be fair, like now, like you know, I actually think an Unstoppable Rage is still a totally powerful playable card. You just see so much less of it that like it's less offensive. I like Unstoppable Rage. Unstoppable Rage is the card that I use to make goofball three color red based control decks playable. Oh yeah, Lich's Ascension. Let's talk about that for a second. This is the seven drop I want to get into. The most disappointing <laughs> card of the set? Man, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out <laughs> Lich's Ascension, right? <laughs> I, I figured out, I mean, I got it out turn five, right? I had the 12 drop in hand. Not good enough, okay? I was Then somebody's like, combine it with, Ulfric's, or combine it with Tullius' Conscription. I was like, that's genius. So I got it out turn six, and then turn seven cast Ulfric's up, or Tullius' Conscription, I mean. Nothing happened. <laughs> this is like I was playtesting against a friend of mine on, on, you know, and he's like, "What are you? What are you doing?" I was like, "Just, just wait, man. It's gonna be legit." And uh, and I cast it. The only thing that came out of my deck was a hiss speaker, oh. <laughs> the two two that ramps. <laughs> I was, oh my god, this is so heartbreaking. I wish that card was. I don't wish it was good because it'd be really crappy feeling if it was good. But I wish that card was at least memeable like well, it's I mean, so bad it can't be memeable look obviously i'm making a video where i barter it away but <laughs> <laughs> if that's the best thing you can say about a card though i think that says plenty hey flying boot i think jim stacy is playable uh i i think that jim stacy is a good card i'm surprised I... that it exists but like it's very powerful It speeds up your attrition clock in controlled matches where your opponent has stopped playing cards. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the board state that I live for. <laughs> I mean, I think Jim C is playable in certain decks. Yeah. I mean, it might steal uh, nothing of value because like, they're just going to give you the worst card. I don't know. That's all right. Ooh, yeah. I, Ian Bits is a great idea. I steal a card with Jim Stacy and then barter it back to them. I like that. I like that. <laughs> that doesn't seem very polite, though. You know what? Here's the thing, Justin. If you do that, you also have to run Thieves Guild Fences and, like, anything that talks about thievery. Like, it has to be full-on theme, right? I like Thieves yeah. Guild Fence because you would literally be stealing from somebody and then selling it back to them as a fence. So, of course, no, you need good. fences in the deck. Honestly, the exact same deck list that I used to barter away Iron Atronox would work for this, because that deck's just, like, stall. <laughs> How do we it's not just... have an alternate art Thieves' Guild fence yet that's literally just, like, a fence outside the Thieves' Guild? <laughs> yeah. that's Because we're resources. too busy making cat pictures on that subreddit right now. Dude, those are amazing. I upvote every single cat picture that gets posted on that subreddit. Shopping. I don't know how there's so many relevant pictures of cats, or if there's somebody setting their cat up at home. A photography uh, studio. I didn't get to show you when I met you guys. I should have shown you. I have a giant tattoo on my back of a cat. <laughs> is it Celine? No, it's not. It's uh, it's, it's not Celine, but it is a cat. <laughs> giant, giant cat tattoo. It's Tony the Tiger saying, "You're no. great," but he's given the finger. <laughs> nope, that's not, that's not it. It's not welcome aboard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, yeah. One of my favorite movies, by the way. But anyway, Zombie Hunter 9 by 19 asks, how do you guys recommend adjusting, adapting to the meta? Uh, ask yourself, can this deck beat Dagoth Aggro, Dagoth Control, Tribunal Temple, and Radoran Rally? 
and then like anticipate losing to some streamlined pre Morrowind warriors and and uh, the sorcerer. But if you can beat those decks a fifty percent or above winner, you'll be fine. What about you, DTB? What's your secret? Um, I read the subreddit and I watch what Justin uploaded last, Horrible and then idea. I counter deck that because that's oh, all I'll see for the next couple days. That's a good one. That is a good one. So, like, when I saw the Blackfall Post's Tribunal list, I was like, well, guess yeah. I'm playing aggro for the next couple days. Yeah. And that's what happened. That's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much what I was going to suggest. Pay attention to the community, see what either was recently posted or what's hot. So, like, right now, uh, you got to beat Tribunal Control, and you got to beat Nixox. So, uh, Warrior is a safe bet. Mid Crusader, I've been having some decent success with basically anything that's going to be, uh, you know, mid range, strong threats that has strength at its core. Um, probably pretty safe. And just, yeah, pay attention to what people are, are doing. And if you're going to a tournament that has multiple decks, yeah, people are always going to bring at least one token deck. It just always happens. Yes. Yes, it will. Or just be a cat and make your own stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's what I do. <laughs> it's, it's not just a cat, Justin. That's a cool cat. That is a cool cat. <laughs> so, um, honestly, I could talk about Marwin forever because this is... I mean, like, in, until Marwin came out, my favorite expansion was definitely Madhouse Collection. But Marwin takes the spot. It's my favorite expansion for Legends ever. Um... I could talk about this expansion forever, but I think that we should probably open up the floor to the uh, to the audience. If you have questions for us about anything, if you want to talk to uh, DTB about anything on his mind, if you want to ask us questions about packs, that's cool. If you want to know how we feel about uh, the, the recent bombing in Syria, that's that's also <laughs> acceptable. We'll, t- we'll answer those questions. Um, Tide Pod, favorite flavors, stuff like that. So first question is from me to DTB. What's on your wall above uh, above you? In the background there, so not this the one? not the flag, but oh. what looks like yeah. a series the hundreds of boxes. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is a small fraction of my Funko Pop collection. Sweet. I have a bit of a problem, like a couple hundred of them. Problem. Uh, I don't necessarily have that bad of a problem. I used to have it behind me, but because I'm prepping to move, uh, it's not there anymore. But I used to have a small number behind me, a Cthulhu one some Avengers ones, stuff like that. I, lo- I have a statue of Buddha on my desk, but I, that's as close, close as I get. <laughs> so, uh, Edelwar in chat asks, Betty Natch, great card or the greatest card? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I don't actually think I've played... You know, I, I I take that back. I drafted a Betty Netch uh, in Solo Arena. I got to Solo Arena rank one again the day after the expansion dropped. <laughs> um, and it was okay in there. But Betty Netch is obviously the greatest card in the game. <laughs> Hold on. I want to see what Dr. Eagle Talon posted. Can I get that because I'm a mod? I think it was a clip of it was you a... talking about your Buddha statue. Oh, really? Uh, I, th- I, I think I saw it for like a second. I could be wrong, though. Coney Dog two writes hi long time listener first time caller my question is for justin i saw people typing about mbti what is your mbti profile well i'll tell you what coney dog two i have an answer here right for you it's e penis uh <laughs> it is not a penis no it, it is not a penis that is charmer uh, projecting projecting his uh love of dick no what it actually is is enfp thank you yeah E-N-F penis. Um, so you, you skipped one. We have Ian Bits who says, What are your thoughts on the fact that my highest win rate deck of the expansion so far is Doomcrag Sorcerer, I vote tier zero. Are you serious, Ian? Yes, he is serious. I've seen him posting it. I've seen the deck. Um, and I, I think that it's amazing because it was on this very podcast that you and I... Preached, go play Doomcrag Sorcerer, remember? Yeah. I mean, 
to be totally fair, we were trolling the community when we did that. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, Ray 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 Barker was a guest on the show, and we were trying to, to figure out how to play our alternate art Ash servants, right? <laughs> Oh, uh, Ian, I need to see that list, please. <laughs> I got, I got a need, I got a need for Doom Craig Sorcerer. Like, yeah, the the short version is think like Doom Craig Sorcerer Control with yeah. uh, I think it's the Therana Ice Spike nice. uh, victory. That's fucking legit. By the way, Dragon Tamer, I did watch your. Uh... <laughs> I watched your long journey to uh, Therana OTK with Ice Spike. Pain. <laughs> and I enjoyed every minute of that, I have to say. Uh, Arkham Warlock, uh, stand up member of the community, does wonderful work with data. He says, For the whole cast, I'm preparing to release another survey soon, most likely on Monday. A goal of mine will be to assess new features introduced in this expansion, uh, features yeah. previously added that haven't been collectively assessed, such as puzzles. Uh, are there any features besides puzzles and tricolor decks that you think deserve some attention? Good question. Um, hmm. Well, I'm excited for, you know, we've, we've been promised a legend card back. I'm excited to see that. CVH confirmed that you have to earn legend rank after it is released. He, he then has some choice words for how lazy I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, I'm looking forward to that. I think the, the card backs we have right now are really sweet. Um, oh, uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? So, card card back um, might be worth adding just because we did get some new ones. I think to tricolor decks. Uh, certainly good to touch on puzzles. Maybe, and I don't know if you do them collectively or if you mention them individually, but maybe it might be uh, worth mentioning just the new the new mechanics, right? So, like, we got plot, we got rally, um, basically all the things that make, like, the houses houses. Like, this, for example, I mean, it is kind of noteworthy. This is the first expansion since Corset that we got a true new keyword, right? Like, rally is a keyword. Um, yeah. So, I don't know if it's worth mentioning that collectively, but I think that it's at least potentially worth shining a light on. That makes sense. Um, we missed a question, actually, about uh, new music we're listening to. Uh, I don't listen to new music. Um, if it came out after 1999, I, it's not music, <laughs> actually. It's just, it's just instruments, but not music. Uh, real talk, though, I, I don't know. I've been re-listening old Counting Crows CDs lately. D you guys DTV. Like Are you Philistines? Like what? What is uh, my playlist? Is a, a shit show mashup of like Disney soundtracks, musicals, Eminem, and like old like early two thousands pop rock from when I was in or pop punk from when I was in elementary school. My playlists are shit shows, man. Oh my god! Hold on, I'm trying to think what pop punk was in the early two thousands. Like Blink One Eighty Two, Bowling for Soup, Simple oh Plan. God. Oh my god. Some 41. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> All right. That's I have a large nostalgia machine. I understand. Uh, mine, mine depends on what I'm doing. I yeah. like, I listen to a lot of like chill Zen music and or like white noise generation. So like rain, yeah. things like that. When I'm working, uh, workouts is anything from, uh, I don't know what I call lady rock. So like hellstorm or hailstorm in this moment, Pretty Reckless, stuff like that, Meg Myers, or sometimes it's, uh... Oh, I, I actually heard Meg Myers for the first time the other day. That, that, that was pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, I dig it. Um, or it might be, I don't know, like, old club music, right? Like, split breed stuff. Sometimes I listen to that at the gym. Uh, Sean James, I love Sean James. That would be what I would recommend. I've been listening to a lot of Sean James lately. That's like a soulful, bluesy rock sound. Um, <laughs> I started typing the lyrics to Nickelback and Chad. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was choosing to purposefully not acknowledge. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that song stuck in my head. That's it. Podcast is gone. Burn it down. You know what Start the over. irony of that is, Justin? 
<laughs> is you looked at that photograph and like literally every time you do it makes you laugh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Dude, okay, I tweeted this out but I had to share this story. A couple weeks ago, Sandra and I were driving somewhere, and I was talking to her about this Legends tournament I had been watching. I, I mentioned Shrieking Harpy, and, like, you know, when I ramble on about Legends, like, uh, there's no reason to listen to me. But, like, she's staring out the window, and I was talking about Shrieking Harpy, and she says, somebody once told me. And I was like, what? <laughs> and she's like, you said Shrek. And I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Shrekking Harpy? Yeah. We're missing so many fucking questions here. What's the state of Mid Sorcerer? It's still as good as it was before the expansion with no changes and you'll be fine. Like you <laughs> That's yeah. what I want you guys to cover next week. You can play it with no changes. Before, the two colors versus three colors. Yeah. Deck building slash power level. Yeah, look, two colors are still good. <laughs> yeah. Part of the reason my top body list is so successful right now is that it preys on greedy three color lists. Yeah, I have a weird. I was gonna say I have a weird mid sorcerer where I'm trying some new cards just to see how they fit. I don't think it's as good necessarily, but um, there's a couple of key cards that I wanted to cycle in and see how they felt. So, but if you play old sorcerer, like it's entirely still good enough to be successful. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm trying some new stuff just to see whether they're worth it or not. Um. Zombie under 9 by 19 has the real question of the hour. It's uh, clumping or non-clumping litter. I use clumping litter. I know it's, like, bad for the environment, and, like, it does get me down a little bit to use this stuff, but I'll be honest. Like, I don't want my house smelling like cat piss and shit. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was I, I used to be real poor, and, and my stuff smelled like cat piss growing up. And, like, I don't need that in my life again. So, uh, yeah, I use the ammonium-smelling bad-for-the-planet stuff. What about you? I make up for, I make up for it by uh uh No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, DTB? I don't have a cat, but my rabbit uh I think I actually use some form of cat litter for it. Uh yeah. but it's like wood pellets. Yeah. Um cuz yeah, it, rabbit piss smells absolutely horrible. Dude, I've tried like some of that like like green stuff and like my cat refu- like will just pee on the floor. <laughs> So, I mean, sometimes he's a dick and he just dumps his litter box, but, I mean... Yeah. So, I don't use clumping litter. Uh, it's also worth noting I don't have a cat. I just don't like the <laughs> litter to stick to my ass, you know? Like, <laughs> that makes I, I, got, I got a little bit of hair, and I don't need the extra clumping, you know? So, yeah. like, I just use non-clumping. Um, I picture you being like that WoW episode of South Park when you're trying to hit Legend. That's actually what I look like in real life. <laughs> now that you guys have met me, you know that. So, uh... Somebody, Ian yeah, Ian right. Bits. Uh, hey yeah. guys, big time fan. Really happy to watch. Just want to yeah. know what's your favorite Nickelback song. Thanks. Yeah. The part uh, where it ends. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, real talk. I don't know that I can name a Nickelback song except that photograph one, and even that I wouldn't remind remember. What about you, DTV? What's your favorite Nickelback song? I don't think I could even like that the photograph song unless it's named Photograph. I don't even know the name of that. Sure. I'm actually going to go with uh, not a Nickelback song. I'm going to go with My Darkest Days Porn Star Dancing because it's my favorite thing to see at the strip club. But Chad Kroger <laughs> is on it as a guest spot, and that kind of counts. Nice. Um, I, yeah. Serious question from Card Counter Chris. Chipotle or Qdoba? Chipotle. Qdoba is trash. Oh, Justin. Fuck yeah, you, so Justin. I can't Justin. even be your friend. Are you serious right now? I'm 100% serious. All right, so... Mexican restaurant tier list right now. Yeah, Wait, tier zero. Actual Taco Mexican. Bell. It's okay. gross, but it's cheap. It's not even it's Mexican food. No, you can't even say that's Mexican food. That's... Yes. All yes. of this isn't real Mexican food. <sighs> tier one, Pancheros. I don't know if that's just a northeastern thing. I, but no, Pancheros they have it here shit. too. I don't like Pancheros either. Like, if oh, we're talking God. chains, like nobody has better cilantro, like lime rice than Qdoba. <laughs> No, my favorite Nickelback song is Sounds of Silence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, I'm on the, the Kidoba hype really train. Good. Del Taco is like more Mexican, but still not like super authentic. I don't know. Chipotle loses just because of that sorry excuse of queso they tried to put out. 
Hey, fuck queso. You don't get the. You don't go to uh, Chipotle for the queso. I don't go to a Mexican restaurant to do anything other than lick, drink liquid cheese. <laughs> All right. I mean, I guess we have different <laughs> objectives here. I'm trying to die by thirty, man. Jesus. I look, man. That was my goal for a long time too. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. It didn't work out. I made it. I made it. So. Yeah, I can't even. I can't. Even, I don't even know if I can continue knowing that Justin legitimately picked Chipotle over Qdoba. We need. We need to take yeah. another question before this ruins our friendship. No. <laughs> uh, was... Somebody asked about uh, versus Arena, and that they were oh, yeah. struggling. And then they said yeah. specifically looking for tips regarding tricolor decks. But my actual tip is don't fall into the trap. I've had a lot more success this expansion just still sticking with what I felt like were strong two-color combos. Like, yeah. if I'm offered Redoran and I'm offered Crusader, I think Crusader is just outright better right now when it comes to Arena because you have to pay attention to what's available in your commons and rares. And I, I think that a lot of the two-color arena draft choices are still better. I don't know. I mean, I've done one regular arena run since the expansion dropped. I've been super busy making sure that I have enough content to release on the channel for Constructed. Um, I drafted three-color, and I think I went five-three. Uh, so I, I can't give you any like good insight yet. I don't think I've played any versus arena post-patch, but... Versus Arena in general, for me, um, usually uh, relies on the quality and or number of my two and three drops. If yeah. those two slots don't come through for me, the rest of my deck usually just sucks and my run sucks. Yeah, I mean, Arena is definitely about tempo, so you're 100% uh, right, DTB. Like, I would agree with you there. I guess for me, when you think about Arena... The most important thing to consider is your pool of commons and rares because that's going to make up the bulk of your deck. I'm not saying that, you know, every now and then you'll get a sweet legend and maybe you'll pull it a bunch and it'll carry a run. Like, we, that does happen. But for the most part, consistency-wise, the commons and rares are going to be presented to you the most. They will make up the bulk of your deck. And so you want to pick attributes that you think have really solid commons and rares. And right now... Um, yeah, I know it's exciting to play a tricolor deck, but you have to remember when you pick three colors, you're opening yourself up to potentially a more diluted pool, right? So like if you think just like I do, for example, right now I think strength and willpower, right? I think that they both have uh, a lot of really good quality commons and rares for Arena right now. So picking crusader in my opinion is still better than picking halalu or redoran because i think that the other ones i mean yeah they have great stuff but you're more likely diluting your choices so draft yellow grab gavel of the ordinator and yeah win. Mm -hmm. and win gavel the ordinator is probably a top 10 strongest card in the set in general in arena that card has to be fucking broken I mean, not like actually broken, but just like insane. Absolutely insane. That's my advice. <laughs> Card counter, Chris, I love it when you open yourself up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I post that to Reddit. That's where all my butthole pictures go. Oh. That's what you do, right? That's what Reddit's for? You just post pictures of your butthole? Did everybody in chat actually see our House Sodius video? <laughs> I mean, if you haven't, you're doing yourself a disservice. Yeah. It's pretty fantastic. I will say, watching my girlfriend's reaction to that, because she knows that I do all of this content creation, but she doesn't really watch my stuff. So her first introduction to our community was your guys' <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh, God. So Dude. she sat down and watched that, and she was like, is this what you do? Yeah. And I had to explain, like, now these guys are fucking crazy, but they're awesome. Like, no, nobody a, else is doing this. We had a pretty long list of things we were not allowed to talk about <laughs> that, like, basically, like, gutted, like, the like the way we usually do the show. Most of it was, like, stuff I wasn't allowed to talk about, actually. Yeah, I, I'm going to I'm gonna throw this out here as well. Um, maybe, maybe some other time... Uh, far into the future when it might be like less of a fresh wound but 
Some of the stuff we weren't supposed to talk to, we snuck in in the form of Easter eggs. And then at rehearsal, I leaned over to CVH and I was like, hey, did you catch this little Easter egg we threw in? And if you would have seen the look on his face and the panic in his eyes when he realized like we were going to get away with something. Yeah, watch that video closely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it that that was also a highlight for me at PAX because he yeah. he had to go track people down and double check and make sure things were okay. Um, yeah, there's a lot of Easter eggs in that video, a lot of good stuff. Also, I just want to give a shout out to Justin because he, the thing that makes me laugh the hardest anytime I watch that is the line that he ends with. And I think it's so beautiful when he says, I don't play this game to have fun. I play this game to get angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. yeah it just makes me laugh every time yeah because because i know people that are like that dude yeah <laughs> we, we do know people like that <laughs> oh. that's a good thing about this. like th that's why this is the best time to to be like a, a deck brewer right is because like everybody's sort of playing suboptimal decks like you can play to have fun and like play your sort of shitty decks and like win Right. And like, I'm not going to lie, like winning feels better than losing. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. I, I mean, it does. It does. And the YouTube comments are nicer when you're not getting your ass handed to you. Oh, dude. Tell me about it. <laughs> Wait, you guys get people YouTube are, comments? People are, all, <laughs> people are all like, dude, you want to hear something insane about YouTube comments? Guess how many comments my channel has gotten today? I don't know. Like... I can tell you how many mine's gotten today. It's like four. I don't want to comment because I saw your tweet where you mentioned what your number was up to. Yeah, hold on. Let me let me check real quick. I'm just throwing it out there. Both of these guys, both of these guys have far more successful YouTube channels than I do. Six hundred and twenty-eight comments today. I got I like have four. To fucking read them all. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing makes your channel come to life like giving away free shit. I know. But dude, the game, like, honestly, the game is going through this huge, huge expansion mm -hmm. right now. Just, like, bigger than we have ever had before. The numbers ha don't lie in there. They have not receded, right? This wasn't like, oh, there's an expansion coming out. Like, this has been going on for, like, three weeks now. The game's, like, popularity is just, or at least viewer internship on, on YouTube is just is completely skyrocketed. Yeah, like, I think when, when we said on the, the show like, a month ago... 100% increase. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When we said on the on the show like a month ago, this is the best time ever to be a Legends fan. Like we weren't kidding. This is. Griffin Gasp uh, asks, "Did you hear about the Gwent crash? Is this like the Bitcoin crash? Kind of. Is it how we're like the other game was supposed to kill us? Nobody's playing anymore. Is that what's happening? Well, no shit, man. I mean, there's there's a lot of people that are upset with it because. Uh, they kind they kind of came out publicly and said, these are some things that we are going to work on, and this is kind of like our future slash like roadmap thing or whatever. Um, the gods. But they literally, they literally were like, uh, we're not doing any more content for six months. Like the the game developers are going dark for six months, and then they're going to come back and give it like a full on revamp. They're it's like, like a death sentence. They're they're like, hey, we we know that a lot of you fell in love with the game when it was back in the certain way. Um, things have kind of like went awry, you know, recently, and we want to get things back on track. So we're gonna do like a, a revamp or an overhaul. So like that part I can get behind, but to come out and say publicly, by the way, we're not gonna do anything new content wise for six months, and they're gonna like go dark with it. Um, like that that's ballsy like that takes balls to just that is so risky like hearthstone's still hearthstone legends is booming right now artifact is going to be launching any day now um MTG i played the Red. lord of the rings card game at pax and it's pve only kind of like fable but like that was okay i don't think it's gonna really chip away at any kind of market but this is not the time to disappear listen narth in chat says that Ari is pronounced Ari. Actually, he says Ari, Ari. Things went awry. Look, listen, listen. It's pronounced whatever the way I want. I'm the kind of guy... <laughs> l l let me let me fill you on a little secret here. When I said earlier that people were not ready for the amount of dad that I am, I'm the kind of guy that when I go to a restaurant, I order a fajita. 
All right. Oh, God. Because I want to see I, the look I, I on somebody's face so when I order a fajita. I've seen this guy harass waitresses. Yeah. At multiple restaurants. Oh my God. I I, I didn't I didn't think that uh, CVH was at all prepared for <laughs> what I was gonna do to that poor waitress, but. To get back at us, she took like twenty selfies with her with it with who's because one of our cameras. I think with his, like she took selfies with his phone and then gave it back to him because she probably thought he was yeah. cute and had no idea that that was not going to happen. Um, yeah. Also, fun stuff about the trip, just random, like I'll throw out random stuff. Uh, CVH invited me to see his shower. Cap of pride. Yeah, that that wow. actually did happen. That ha that actually I happened. Saw them get on the elevator. Um, How many drinks did that take? I mean, it doesn't take any. I, 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 I enjoy seeing a shower. I don't know what you want. Uh, other fun things that happened. Uh, we went to a coffee shop and every, every seat was taken, right? This place was packed. And again, like cute, adorable. Justin was looking around like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I approached a complete stranger who was clearly trying to study and do homework. And I was like, hey, by the way, we're sitting at this booth with you. And uh, <laughs> then we made friends with her, and she was very, very kind. Um, her name was Leanne, but yeah, we we from, totally from just Kuwait. yeah from Kuwait, but we totally just stole her booth and like trapped her <laughs> because I I don't I don't have like uh, boundaries as a human. Added, before this gets added to my FBI file, like <laughs> <laughs> we did not. Okay, in the Italian restaurant, we didn't harass the woman. Charmer just made a bunch of lame jokes. Okay. They were cute. They were funny. We had a good time. Good times were had. The waitress got a huge tip for putting up with our shit. And at the coffee shop, we did sit down and invade a woman's space for about three hours. But she engaged in, you know, she and Sandra started chatting. We got to know her. And she was, really, you know, she knew Pax was in town. She wanted to know what we did and stuff like that. And so it worked out. But these things happen. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm I'm purposefully making it sound creepier than what it was. I I asked before we sat down, and I introduced myself, and uh, the waitress engaged in my banter. Like the very first thing she said was like, "We're a from scratch kitchen, and we've got a lot of you know things that we do back there, basically. So if you have uh, allergies or you know food issues, you need to let us know ahead of time." And so, like, I gave my order, and then right when CVH went to order, I kind of purposefully interrupted and went, oh, wait, you said something about allergies? And she said, yeah. And so CVH stops ordering because he, like, thinks I have a legitimate allergy. It's his first time, like, ever <laughs> hanging out with me. And I was like, yeah, I'm allergic to joy. If you could get people to quiet down in here, that would be great. And yeah. to her credit, she jumped right on it and went, oh, yeah, I totally agree. In fact, if you want, I've got some servers back here that'll – fully acquiesced to that because they are yeah. like i don't know remember what she said something to the equivalent of like she boring or soulless or whatever but she she was like right up on it so um we we missed a question by the way um gyro captain asks dragon tamer blade what's the next deck you're excited to try out what is on my list uh so i tried slaying graveyard talvani um realized 75 cards is probably too big for those kind of shenanigans and yeah you really the, need the brotherhood sanctuary mm -hmm. and the, the graveyard interaction still isn't quite powerful enough to matter i don't think yeah um like i, I was really excited about that necromancer or the odernerin sorcerer or whatever it is yeah. um but i realized he pulls almost nothing useful besides maybe your unglim or something like that and even if you use skeletal dragon or something like that to buff his attack the rest of your discard pile got their attack buff too, so you're still not pulling anything relevant. Um, so I want to go back and go back to my good old Slay Scout, which I have not touched yet, and see if I can make it somewhat viable. I think I like, I like the Necromancer. Um, I'm currently running a one of in Sorcerer because he still pulls back like Wardcrafter, Daggerfall Mage, Shrieking Harpy. Like, there's a ton of stuff that I think is actually like pretty valuable if you get to choose right it's like a, a toolbox so i'm running it as a one of to test it if i wanted to really try to abuse the card i actually think something like warrior that either makes use of rally or some creepy version <laughs> that runs like rothgar forge could be interesting something that you know you're gonna play it and it's gonna like be buffed maybe warrior's fury makes a comeback mm -hmm. uh, not comeback like it was, it was never around, but hey. you know what I mean? Like, 
that's that good. that's where I think that that card could potentially shine more if you're really trying to abuse it is in Warrior more than anything. I was trying uh, Caius and Caius's machinations as well to try and get him a couple little buffs. Uh, but see, my affinity lies with like Triple Brotherhood Sanctuary having discarded like three Blood Magic Lords and then Fall Create the Filer just filled your board with nonsense. Uh, so that's where my affinity lies. So like pulling out like an Ungolim just feels way less exciting in comparison although way more practical sure yeah max also hitting it uh you can galen necromancer to resurrect galen again and start chaining a bunch of stuff that's another thing like i think necromancer has a lot of potential it's a card i'm keeping my eye on yeah i do think warrior has the most potential again because of the presence of Rally, Fury, Rathgar. Um, but I'm not sure that that's good enough. In fact, I, I'm pretty positive it's not good enough. But it would make for some fun memes. I agree. Fyredrake, glad you could join us. I also really want to make Fleeting Apparition good. I'm positive there's a way. I just need to figure out what my way is going to be. Well, what you need is a Forsworn Guide, a Sun and Shadow. Yeah, no. <laughs> nope. 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 Nope, nope, nope. Actually, this, I mean, like, I, I'm i brewing in my head, right? Like, Shrine, Shrine to Namira, Warrior... Old Velothi Assassin, Doomcrag, most of the same old stuff, Necromancer for little lulls, and the new 4 3 for 3 in purple that gives you blood magic spells when shit dies. It's not unreasonable. Rodoran Battlespear might work in that deck too because you have a lot of cheap small stuff. You have charge creatures and you have uh, obviously Necromancer who you want rally triggers on. Yeah, I... I'm launching Legends right now to start brewing, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Have think... you guys done any gauntlet runs yet? Uh, I haven't today. I was, again, doing house selling stuff. So if you're uh, wondering why I'm behind on streaming and content since getting back from PAX, despite uh, fervor and excitement for the game, it's because when I get home from work... I immediately do house showings and I go see other houses and that has like consumed my life. That's fair. So once I get moved. All right. So brew, brew this with me. All right. Um, what am I deleting? I have like six decks involving Stormcoat Camp and Skeevers. So we're getting rid of one of those. <laughs> Dude, I blame Pete Crichton for this obsession. Right. <laughs> have you played Therana Skeevers yet? Yeah, well, in casual, yeah. It's, I mean, you know, anything that relies on drawing Theranus sucks. Like except for except for Doomcrag Sorcerer. Therana? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I haven't, I haven't played that yet, but yeah. Rest assured, I will. But has it consumed your joy? It's yeah. I have no joy until. Like, at this point, I, more than half my stuff is in storage, and, like, I come home, but then I can't be home, and then I have to, like, go see other houses, and then the houses I want to see go fast, and then they're off the market, and I just want to get moved and get set up so that I can, you know, part of the reason we're moving is that we just need more space for, you know, the wife and the kids, but the other reason is I'm trying to get a better dedicated space for my content creation. Um, I've got some ideas and some things I want to do. And all of that is kind of on hold until I get a dedicated space for it. So uh, I'm really excited for the future, but I gotta I gotta get it done. So yeah. Zombie Hunter Nine by Nineteen asks, "How degenerate do you think using the horrible mushroom tower in order to betray your soul tear with giant giant bats when you have sixteen plus magicka?" I can ban people from chat, right? 
I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's that degenerate because that that's like a million turns in the future. Yeah. Like, if you've got 16 Magicka, don't you usually kind of just win anyway? Like, I'm just, choose how you win. I'm just going to throw this out here. By the time that thing has won, I've won three times with Nixox. <laughs> Damn, dude. Damn. <laughs> Bringing the Nixox full circle. That's what I do. I bring it full circle. Mission accomplished. Doodle do 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 last call for stupid questions, guys. We'll answer anything about anything. Ask us about how the Mueller investigation is going. Yeah, we're not we're not at PAX. We 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 can like be semi shenanigans. It's going well. It's Mueller time. What goes in this deck? I don't even remember what's in this deck. I'm recording with this tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what crafted could possibly go wrong? Sorcerers. Nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> uh, Ozzy is asking about the Michigan housing market and has it gone batshit insane? It is. It is depending on the location. So, like, that's the caveat. So, where I live, there are like three or four neighborhoods that like houses are listed and they have offers. Um, and then there are other neighborhoods where things will sit for two months. And obviously we want to move to one of those more desired neighborhoods because that's why they're desired. Um, but for us, the real motivator is schools, right? Michigan has some real, real bad problems with uh, their school system. Um, we, we are the state that was home to Betsy DeVos and her activism. And so charter schools and school of choice and vouchers right back, guys. I'm sorry. kind of like really tore us up. And our state has been struggling a lot with education. Um, and it's something that I'm like well in the know, not just because I'm a teacher, but because of my previous job where I worked at a nonprofit that focused on education. And so like, I know what schools are good and what aren't. And we're trying to get my kids into a good school now so that, you know, the future can be bright for them and it's important. And yeah, like I don't, I don't care what your political affiliation is, whether you're uh, conservative, whether you're liberal, here's the thing about Betsy DeVos guys. Um, I wish that I could get a job with exactly zero previous experience in that field. Like whether you're a conservative, whether you're uh, a liberal, whether you're not even an American, Betsy DeVos uh, has never worked in a school, has no previous, uh, like, schooling in education, um, right? Like, that's not what her degree is in. She's never served on a school board. Like, she's done absolutely nothing in the field and instead has just thrown a bunch of money at uh, her own businesses, basically, and then got appointed, like... Like, again, like, it should just piss you off. Like, there's no reason that I should ever go into a job interview and be like, oh, by the way... I have no previous experience in this field and I should get an executive level job. Like I, I, I actually can't even read. Yeah. So <laughs> my daddy's giving you money. So yeah. So like it, it should, it should piss you off. It does piss me off. And, uh, it's again, like it's, it's kind of ruined my state. And that's part of the reason that, uh, education and the certain housing markets are the way they are. Like everything's a hot mess. So that's the long winded answer. Anyway, yeah, things are yeah, crazy. I, mean, I, I agree with most of what you said. Uh, Nurse says there should be an Elder Scroll Legends meetup in the Great Lakes region. There's so many of us around here. Yeah, I could get behind that. Um, I'll be in Minnesota next month. There's one in Minnesota? N no, he's let... saying he'll be in I Minnesota. Be in Minnesota. Um, as, as selfish as I would like to be and say, hey, it should be like local to me, realistically if we were going to do anything like in the region it would probably be chicago it's a big city that's like on a lake and everybody knows where chicago is so and they have cake shakes so like if we ever to decide to do one we should do that there but i agree do it in toronto the problem with toronto is that that requires some of us to get passports and uh getting is 
Specifically, if you're from the States, like, international travel is kind of a pain right now. Or if you're a several time over convicted felon. <laughs> so, yeah. Good times. Chicago pizza is not at all underrated. Uh, Chicago pizza, and I'm saying this as a snobby Jersey boy, Chicago pizza beats most New York pizza. Chicago, I, Chicago pizza is legit. I, I have to agree, man. I, I, I lived in New York for quite a while. I, I still agree with you. <laughs> I'm also going to throw this out here. Chicago has the best food trucks and food carts in the nation. Also the best bulls. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I guess we're going to wrap it up here because we did last call for questions. Yeah, rock on. Any Anything to say on the way out, DT? Uh, no, just thank you very much for having me. It was an awesome time. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm glad you could join us, man. Yeah. And, uh, we we got to have you back sometime. We should do a, some kind of brew-off thing or get you involved in our Creatures Challenge or something like that. Definitely. I'm always free. Sweet. Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, if you're not already, go subscribe to Dragon Tamer on YouTube, go subscribe to Justin, but they they are both much larger YouTubers than I, so uh, you probably already follow them. But hey, go do it anyway. <laughs> I mean, that's We're true. very comparable size, Charmer. We don't need to compare size here. <laughs> I've, I've made like four <laughs> e-penis jokes this, this cast. Of course we were comparing size. <laughs> but... All right, guys. We will uh, see you on the ladder. See you on the ladder.